FDA is responsible to protect patient health and there must be an early warning system available to help FDA fulfill this responsibility or the requirement. As a part of today's video, we will try to understand what is this early warning system that helps FDA to meet or fulfill this responsibility to protect the patient health. I am talking about a term called as FAR or Field Alert Report. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub. And uh, today we will discuss about FAR, when the FAR is required, what are the different types of FAR. And at the end, we will also understand when the FAR is not required. So let us begin with the presentation. So what is FAR? The FAR stands for Field Alert Report. The FAR is an early warning system to help FDA fulfill its responsibility to protect patient health. Now when to raise FAR? Now this is the responsibility of the company who has got a license to market and manufacture the drug products for the US or the America. So, this is the responsibility of a manufacturing company, a license holder to raise an O, to raise an FAR. But when this, uh, but when this FAR can be raised, NDA or ANDA applicant must submit a FAR to the FDA of receiving the following kinds of information for a distributed drug products. In case if you have distributed the particular lot of a drug product, and in case if the below conditions met, we are going to talk about those conditions one by one. In that case, a company has to raise a FAR. The first important, in case if you find that there is an incorrect labeling taken place during the manufacturing and now the batch is under the distribution. If there is a risk of bacteriological contamination, like if there is a contamination possible out of bacteria, yeast, mold, virus or any another microorganism, then company can raise a FAR. If there is a significant chemical, physical or other change or deterioration of a drug product, in that case company can think of a raising FAR. Chemical change could be a degradant, physical change could be a change into the, the physical appearance or a separation of the phases of, in case of semi-solid drug products like oil versus aqueous phase or there could be some another changes which are actually deteriorating the quality of the drug product damaging to the quality, safety, identity, efficacy of the drug product. OS found during a stability study for a batch under distribution you have this annual stability batch and the batch is now already been distributed in the market and for let us say at 12th month time interval you found there is a increase in the degradation products beyond the specification limit so the product is now out of the spec at 12th month but batch is uh, already been the market in that case company has to raise a FAR there could be some problem related to packaging, isn't it? There could be uh, the foil issues for a uh, the blister pack products or there could be any another packaging components which are not found meeting the specification. So for those reasons, you can raise FAR. There could be some customer complaint which meets the criteria for FAR. See, all customer complaint cannot meet the criteria for FAR. So it's responsibility of a company to analyze the customer complaint. And in case if they found, okay, now it meets the threshold of FAR according to the, the, uh, the point to 11.198 or 2.12.71, in that case, it's, need, it's important to raise FAR. So what are the different types of FAR? So there are three types of FAR, which is initial FAR, second one follow up FAR and third one is final FAR. Let us try to understand what is mean by uh, initial FAR. It is the first time you have submitted FAR about a specific problem. You found the problem and we talked about those conditions when the FAR is needed. So the first time intimating or communicating to the 
agency that look now this product has microbial contamination or this product has found out of the specification result it's very immediate action required and now this is very first time you are communicating product issue to the agency what is follow up far follow up far refers to subsequent fars you submit to provide additional information about the problem identified in the initial far see there could be a situation that you are in the investigation process you have not yet identified the root cause and you want to update fda with all these findings and the follow up far can be used example finding of the ongoing investigation additional facilities or lots identified within the scope of the same issue sample analysis conducted during the investigation maybe laboratory results or any potential root causes identified as a part of investigation and you want to intimate fda about these findings you can use the follow up far now what is been by final far so final far refers to the far you you submit to close out the initial far by identifying the root cause and by describing what kind of corrective actions you have taken or you are going to take so this is your close up of the far that is final far let us now understand in which condition far is actually not required the first point if a product has not been distributed and an os of out of os means out of specification result is discovered that is unrelated to distributed drug products in that case far is not required if an os result for distributed drug product is discovered during stability testing but the result is invalidated within 3 working days what do i mean invalidating the testing result you are proving that this result is is only because of the aberration in the measurement or during the analysis it is not related to the product quality and the three days is the timeline given so in case if you are able to identify the root cause which is analytical error in that case far is not required in process os results as your batch is not yet manufactured it is not is distributed so there is no meaning in talking about raising far for result os result found during in process testing os result not related to distributed batch suppose you are analyzing the finished product but uh, your batch is under on, on the whole is it? it is under quarantine area not yet distributed and hence in case if there is os observed you need not to raise the far what is the required time frame for submitting far submit far within 3 working days of receipt of the information so 3 days is something timelines for submitting far what will happen if uh, i do not submit far within 3 working days failure to submit far can be a potential 483 audit observations can catch this point and you are expected to receive this 483 So thank you so much for uh, you know your attention and uh, please let me know in case if you want to add some more points on this particular topic bye bye